Hey folks, this is Mario Schlosser, CEO, co-founder of Oscar Insurance. Uh, thanks for joining us today here. And George, how are you doing? Good. Hello, everyone. This is uh, George Kaldropoulos, CEO of Health Sherpa. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Thanks for coming on, coming on George. Uh, it's great to see you again. Um, I'm glad we both uh, are helping people get covered in today's day and age. Um, so thanks for coming on, on the on the program. Thanks for for talking to me here. I'd love to hear you out on your thoughts uh, on financial challenges people face, many of us face during COVID-19 and how we can think about uh, the role health insurance in getting insurance coverage plays during this time. Uh, and maybe say a bit more about what Health Sherpa, your company does before we jump into that. Sure, so uh, at a high level, um, we build enrollment technology to help people enroll in, in marketplace coverage like the, the plans that Oscar offers and uh, in Medicaid as well. Um, and what we're seeing now, you know, more than ever, is that uh, that's a hugely important thing that lots of people need right now, because as unfortunately tens of millions of people have been losing their jobs, uh, there's been a, a huge surge in demand for, for uh, enrollment in affordable comprehensive health insurance coverage. And as we'll discuss, it's, it's not always the easiest thing to get to get signed up. And so um, it's it's a real it's a real interesting opportunity, but also a real uh, important sort of responsibility uh, that we have right now. Yeah, no, and, and you and I actually happened to work together at the same employer at the in the last recession, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and it's, um, in those days the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, wasn't around, and so if you lost your job back then, you really uh, had very few options as to how to retain your health insurance. Um, and I, for one, am very glad that we. At Oscar, you at Health Sherpa, other insurance companies can now help to provide insurance coverage for folks who unfortunately lose their job in this and who at least are able to retain insurance coverage. So thanks for doing that uh, and, and driving that. Maybe talk a bit about uh, what are you hearing from your clients, your customers, the brokers you work with on financial and healthcare obstacles people have now that they face COVID-19. The overriding theme that we're seeing is one of confusion. The healthcare system in this country is is fairly complex. Um, there is both a tremendous you know range of, of services available, but also a fair amount of complexity in accessing those services. And so we see a lot of confusion uh, on behalf of both consumers who are looking to get their coverage after losing their jobs, uh, and also on behalf of industry participants about how to navigate sort of this landscape and figure out what is right. The ACA has really put a floor on, on, on or a backstop for a lot of people in terms of the coverage that's available. Um, it hasn't necessarily made it easier to, to find your way to the right type of coverage. And so uh, we have an abundance of choice and people have a lot of choices, uh, but just as with, as with sort of everything that is as important as health insurance, that choice can also be a burden uh, in that it requires people to really learn and understand a lot about their options to make sure that they're making the right choices for themselves uh, and for their family. So um, we do see a lot of confusion and I think that companies like like Oscar and Health Sherpa play a critical role in, in helping people navigate and understand their options and make sure they are actually getting the right appropriate coverage because uh, unfortunately there are inappropriate coverage that, that, that uh, people are exposed to and we'll discuss that later. On the sort of inspiring side, I'd say it's been nice to see how quickly our industry has sort of reoriented around meeting the coverage needs uh, of the people who have newly lost their coverage. And so, you know, um, things, this started happening, everyone sort of took a couple weeks to adjust to working and living, you know, working from home. And all of a sudden there was sort of a, a, a massive uh, influx of, of interest of people saying, hey, you know, we have these folks, unfortunately, we're, we're furloughing, you know, 10,000 people on Monday, we're, we're laying off these people, what do we do for them? And it was, I think it was, um, while that backdrop is certainly not, not a, a positive one, it was, it was nice to see everyone sort of very proactively looking to address the coverage question, even beyond sort of what, you know, traditionally was their responsibility or that they were legally required to. It's good to hear. And I, uh, the, the double whammy of both a recession starting and a recession starting for, for healthcare reasons, the pandemic, it's really, uh, has never really occurred in the history of the U.S. before, right? And so in any recession in the past, people losing their health insurance is a terrible thing. It's particularly terrible when it's when when they lose a job into a healthcare crisis uh, like COVID-19. And so again, I'm glad that you're out there 
in helping people with getting coverage. And so, um, I'm glad we can play a part in this too. I think we've seen some, you know, stories that, that warm my heart as well uh, in, in many ways. Um, we have had, uh, you know, cases like um, a, a member of Oscar in one of our states who relies on infusion therapy and um, who had trouble getting really out of the home and probably shouldn't have gotten into the home, frankly, uh, left the home uh, because member was you know, compromised. Um, and so we very quickly with our clinical team were able to jump on this expedite authorizations and delivery through uh, at our at home infusion team and get to the member and make sure the member doesn't have to leave the home uh, in this particularly dangerous time at the moment. And so uh, these are things you should rely on your insurance company for. Let's maybe be very clear for people who are listening to this and watching this. Um, if you lost your job this moment, what options do you have with regards to um, uh, getting an Affordable Care Act plan? If you lose your job, you should absolutely screen to determine your eligibility for two government programs. Program number one is going to be marketplace uh, health insurance. So that's subsidized coverage through private insurance companies like Oscar. Uh, and the second is the Medicaid program. Both of these are high quality health coverage, comprehensive health coverage, um, either HEP partially or entirely subsidized by the government. That means the government is paying for it, not you. And your eligibility is determined primarily by your income. So when you lose your job and your, your income drops, your eligibility for these programs dramatically increases. And so everyone should really be looking to see what they're eligible for before they do something like enroll in COBRA, which can be very, very expensive uh, and not necessarily a, a better option. Uh, we've enrolled over 3 million people in marketplace coverage here at Health Sherpa. The average premium is right around $50 a month. Now, what that means, the coverage itself costs thousands, uh, hundreds to thousands of dollars. But of course, the government is paying a significant portion of that bill on your behalf. So for $50 a month for the cost of a cell phone bill, you can get comprehensive health insurance that covers all your pre-existing conditions, all your prescriptions, all your doctor visits. It doesn't have lifetime limits. It doesn't exclude anything you may have. And so that is a tremendous value and a tremendous safety net for consumers who, who qualify. And that's why it absolutely makes sense for people to spend the five minutes it takes to anonymously determine whether they may or may not be eligible uh, for these programs. An extremely important point to stress, right? That um, the advent of the Affordable Care Act plans, of the marketplace plans, have really uh, put into many, many people's hands within reach very affordable health insurance coverage in a way that just wasn't the case before. Um, and I think one thing we still notice is that people don't necessarily have the awareness of how affordable these plans can be, even if, or particularly if the income is low because they lost their job or they're a freelancer um, or they're working for somebody else on an hourly basis and their income went down because of the crisis and the economic crisis right now. So definitely go and check in a very simple way on Health Sherpa, healthcare.gov or directly on Oscar, other websites, um, what kind of the subsidization you would get from the governments. And, and most people will realize they're getting a big chunk of this coverage paid for by the governments. And so um, actually maybe as a segue there, why is health insurance coverage important? Uh, what additional perspective have you earned there throughout this pandemic now? Health insurance coverage is access to, it's fundamentally what it is, is, is it's access to healthcare. And there is a lot of choice uh, in this country. And what that means is that there are also a lot of, you know, nuances that one has to be aware of. And so, I think health insurance coverage is, is fundamentally important because it's people's access to health care. And of course, high quality health insurance coverage and high quality means covers everything, doesn't limit what you know um, payouts, uh, doesn't exclude pre-existing conditions, covers your prescriptions, covers your hospitalizations and so on and so forth. High quality health insurance coverage, like the coverage that Oscar offers and that Health Sherpa shows uh, people who visit our site um, is, is hugely important now. And if there's one thing that public health uh, scientists know about healthcare is that preventative healthcare is one of the best things you can do to kind of prolong your lifetime, how long you live, literally, statistically speaking. So that goes to show that uh, getting health insurance coverage, while I think on everybody's minds during a pandemic, is important in pretty much any time of your life, any stage of life you are in. Uh, if you're younger and you feel generally healthy, you know, ask your primary care physician about your sleep quality, for example, and let him, him or her help you with that. If you're older, you know, obviously go get preventive checkups and so on. 
about a third of 133 million Americans have a chronic disease, don't even know that they have that chronic disease. And that's a disease that can eventually you know, kill them or, or really impede the way they live their life. So in other words, again, get insurance coverage, it's important. Um, and we're not just saying this, I think, as CEOs of two companies who, whose business is to give insurance coverage, but uh, you know, I almost learned this myself, how important this really all is when we got into the business of health insurance coverage. You know, part of the founding story of Oscar uh, is actually that my wife, uh, at the time when, when we started Oscar, was a, a postdoctoral researcher at Columbia University here in New York City. And um, she was pregnant with our son, who's now uh, seven years old. Um, so was the company started Oscar around the same time when she was pregnant. And she finished her program and she went on COBRA uh, for a couple of months there. And she ended up paying under COBRA the rates that Columbia, throughout all these years that she was employed at Columbia, was paying on a monthly basis for her on her behalf when she was still an employee there. And that rate was $2,000 a month. And so here she was making, at the time, about $45,000 or so a year. And all this time, Columbia behind her back, so to speak, was paying $24,000 a year just for health insurance coverage. And that COBRA rates is then the rates you would have to pay out of pockets when you leave and when you stay on your employer's health plan for quite some time. Compare that $2,000 a month to the $50 a month, for example, you can get through many health shopper plans, many Oscar plans as well. Um, that is just not, you know, obviously not a comparison right there. You can't afford the 2000 and almost, well, many people can afford the $50 a stay up a month. Uh, so definitely look for that. There are other ways of buying $50 a month uh, health insurance coverage. Um, and those can be very, very deceiving and deceptive outright in the coverage that they provide. Short-term health plans, um, you know, certain other kind of association plans and so on. Uh, can you talk a bit about what the downsides are there and how you think about those? So here at Health Sherpa, we don't actually recommend any of these plans, things like short-term uh, health insurance, uh, healthcare sharing ministries, uh, or other types of incomplete um, coverage. Uh, so just to give you a sense of why, uh, short-term health insurance plans do not cover pre-existing conditions. Um, they're Ill illegal in some states because of that, because they are incomplete and inadequate coverage. And I can't tell you how many times we've spoken to people who thought they had health insurance, who thought that they were covered, uh, who had um, you know, a medical issue, an expensive medical issue, went to get it treated on, and discovered that their short-term plan did not cover it because it was considered a pre-existing condition. Now, specifically with short-term plans, the industry there does something known as underwriting at the time of coverage. So that's a fancy way to say that they let you sign up and then when you try and actually file a claim uh, and actually get a medical procedure covered, they start to look for reasons to deny you. That's not, a, that's not something that um, ACA compliant coverage will ever do. For example, Oscar will never do something like that. They will comply with the law and they'll pay for everything that they're required to cover. Um, unlike the short-term plans where they're literally looking for reasons not to pay for your medical expenses. The key message for me in, with regards to looking at these, at these kind of uh, companies is that um, they are doing this because they want to save money on covering your health care. These are, as you said, big businesses that try to have a good business by denying coverage and denying care when it's too late for the member. And I think that I agree that's very problematic. And anybody who wants to do more research on this, or frankly, talk to their local uh, insurance regulator. Um, most people don't know, I probably didn't, didn't know either, um, that you can actually, in your local state that you're in, in New York, um, in Florida, in Texas, you know, look at your regulators and insur insurance websites and find a fair amount of comparative information about the insurance companies. And that's actually quite a useful kind of a source of research to look at and compare what's out there. Mario, I strongly agree. I mean, to our earlier point, uh, there's the United States has tremendous healthcare resources uh, and such complexity around accessing those healthcare resources. So, I mean, at the end of the day, no one, you know, no one, but no one wants health insurance. What they want is access to health care. And so um, what we're hoping to do here, and I think what both of our companies really are, are focused on, is giving people the best possible access to health care in the most affordable way, taking advantage of everything that the law has to offer in, ter in terms of coverage. And this is the burden, the responsibility that we bear, that we discussed earlier, right, which is um, we are 
we have become both of our companies over just to your point over the last five to seven years critical components of the of the way in which the people you know the the infrastructure through which people access healthcare uh, and so it is incumbent on us to you know be good stewards of, of that and, and, and to and to carry out our responsibilities in terms of helping the people that we serve um, and also you know anything that uh, we can do in terms of getting um, the word out is unbelievably important because the reality is by the time someone comes to a health Sherpa or by the time they come to an Oscar, they're, they're going to be okay. We will take care of them. We'll take care of them. The real challenge is what happens before that um, and all the steps that, that get them there. Because particularly to our earlier discussion, when you've got people who have always had employer coverage, you know, whose employer has been paying thousands of dollars a month for their health insurance and people are completely oblivious to this fact and suddenly they lose that and they're presented with a COBRA bill for thousands of dollars a month um, or misleading or deceptive advertising on the internet. It can, it can be a really, a really fraught and, and, and challenging path to, to a good outcome. And so that's why it's so important that people take the time to, to understand their options and to screen for the best, you know, to, to screen for their eligibility for the programs that are designed by law to help them. Yeah, exactly right. In my view, the, insurance options you now have in the marketplace, in the individual markets, have probably become more innovative and more tailor-made to customers' needs and real people's needs than many of the employer plans I've even encountered. I mean, the employer plans sort of like are, in my view, are almost like a thing of the past, you know, the largest common denominator kind of thing, um, slow-moving, big companies. Um, the individual plans have really become very nimble, targeted, innovative and all kinds of additional benefits and, and ideas they load in there as well. You know, I know we do that. I know you see this in, in selling these plans as well. How, how do you think about that? It's probably largely an artifact of the, uh, or, or driven by the fact that the individual market is much more competitive uh, than the group market in terms of more issuers buying for, for people's business, more innovation occurring, um, more innovative companies, honestly, companies like Oscar and HealthSherpa, really trying to push the envelope in terms of helping people um, to your earlier point, not just access healthcare when they need it, but also improve their quality of life through access to healthcare. Yeah. And so it's, it's pretty exciting to see, again, choice can be a very good thing when it's um, when all your choices are good choices um, or, or when there's a, at least a, 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 a backstop to ensure that there are no terrible or bad choices. Uh, and that's something that is is very exciting about the the um, ACA marketplaces, which is that you do have this this sort of floor of, of a guarantee that everything will be covered. There won't be those pre-existing condition exclusions. Um, that if you qualify for help, the plans will be um, can be very affordable uh, for a very specific affordability calculation. Uh, and so you layer the innovation on top of that affordability, and it really is, I think, one of the brightest spots uh, in terms of the. What, 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 you know, we see down the path uh, in terms of access to healthcare. I would add to that, that's, um, you know, the, 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 the best insurance products can give you a service experience and, and help you navigate the healthcare system in a way that you, again, couldn't do as well on your own. And, you know, I hope we offer that, others um, can offer that too. Health server is a great place to discover all these various options. The other factor there is that, um, in the market that we serve, you and I serve, uh, people can vote with their feet. Right? They can just if they don't like the insurance company they're with, they can leave at the end of the year. And that's just not the case for employer coverage, right? where you basically got to quit your employer before, before you can get a new health insurance coverage plan or a new coverage plan to begin with. And I think that's a very, very powerful forcing function for healthcare as a whole, and certainly health insurance companies that they for the first time have to really listen to the real people using their plans and not hide behind, you know, human resource departments and um, uh, the other layers here in the middle there usually, you know. That's when technology and like smartphones became, became popular and became, became useful, when people bought them with their own money and really try to use them and say, hey, this clunky thing that I got from my employer here is just not working very well for me, I'm gonna buy an iPhone. Anyhow, that's uh, I think a good forcing function there, which by the way also means that you should, um, as an in, as a member of an insurance company, don't feel, don't hold back. You know, complain. They're gonna, they're gonna have to listen now. You know, previously they could sort of ignore you for the most part of you with an employer coverage because are you gonna quit? Again, your employer to quit your insurance company? No, 
now they know that at the end of the year you can call me and say, no, I'm quitting, I'm going elsewhere. That's going to make them listen to your complaint that you have. And it's interesting because related to that, the, the awareness gap that exists in terms of people understanding that they do have options on the individual market creates a sort of a false uh, sense that people are, net, are potentially locked into jobs, potentially they don't like jobs they don't want to stay at because those are the only um, way that they, they think they will have access to healthcare. That is by and large not true. Um, people do have choices and they have good choices. You just need to understand what those are and how to access them. Even if you quit your job, not just get laid off from your job, you have a so-called qualifying life event and you can go into the marketplace and you can buy insurance, right? Absolutely. And, 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 and to that point, so if, if you hate your job, not that, you know, this is as relevant now, but if you hate your job and you quit your job, you can absolutely get marketplace insurance. And if you qualify for subsidies, um, you will receive those subsidies regardless of why you, that, that employer coverage terminates. And you can't get denied and you won't get a higher price even if you have a piece of condition and you will get the drugs that you will require and so on. Right? George, hey, it was great to see you again. Same here, Mark. Yeah, I'm glad you're well and I'm glad your family's healthy and I'm uh, looking forward to actually open Roman again this, this fall uh, and um, explain to people why health insurance is important and, and why they should go to health Sherpa to buy it. Well, thank you very much, Mara, and we look forward to, we look forward to that as well. Awesome. See you soon, man. Thanks a lot.